All right, so today's video should be nice and fun. We got someone different. So this is a buddy that um, needs a little help working on his John. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna get this going. So this is going to be a HO alternator swapped into a Renix vehicle. So this is a 1989 Jeep Cherokee, and uh, he's got the typical problems with his alternator and whatnot. So on the Renix, she's way down at the bottom with all this funky bracketry. So what we're gonna do is swap to an HO alternator um, and it's gonna be high mount. So this is two two kits in one. We're gonna do the eBay high mount alternator kit with an HO swap um, and all that good stuff. So we're gonna see how hard that is and uh, go from there. So this is a high mount kit. This is going to replace the AC con uh, the air conditioner compressor. So if you got AC or you like AC, this might not be the kit for you, but most Jeeps don't work anyway. So. Uh, we're going to need the HO bracket, which luckily is already installed. Um, so that's one step down. We need the HO bracket, the HO alternator. We need an external regulator because on the Renix, if we come over to here, this is my high mount kit, uh, and this is internally regulated. So this is an 8244. It's a big, uh, a big case design, but it's got all the wires in here, and everything is done in the alternator. So with the kit that we're going to be using... Um, for the HO, they're regulated with the uh, the engine computer, so we need an external regulator to make this work on Renix. So yeah, shouldn't that be fun? All right, so here are the parts for today. First up, of course, is the alternator itself. Um, is this the Grand? What is this? That's the ZJ? A, uh, Dodge V8. Dodge V8. Okay. So this right here, since we are going to go with an HO alternator, we might as well go with the big one. So this is the uh, the 130 amp one or 136 amp that you you hear all over the place. Uh, this will fit in the Cherokee, uh, the HO Cherokees with a little bit of bracket grinding. So we'll have to see what we need to do to fit this with our kit. But yeah, now we're we're getting more amps with the HO alternator uh, to make this work. We have an external regulator here. So this kit comes with everything we need. Um, as far as the wiring goes, so all the zip ties, all the all the wires, the the connector that actually plugs right in, so that'll be easy. And this came from AlternatorParts.com, I believe. Yeah, the Quick Start John. So um, the kit came with the the regulator, right? Yeah. Okay. So they have it with and without a bridge rectifier. Okay. So this is the the whole kit that you get from them with all the instructions. So that's nice and easy. And then the eBay kit that'll be used to adapt. Uh, the alternator to the AC compressor mount. So this is the high mount. This will only work on the newer brackets, not the older ones, because the AC compressors use a different um, a different mounting style. So hopefully this is everything we need to adapt um, HO stuff onto a uh, Renix Jeep. So we'll see how it goes. So let's see, what do we gotta do first? So in order to take the belt off, we have this wonderful Renix um, belt adjuster so we'll have to loosen this bolt i think we've got one or two bolts at the bottom that we have to loosen up and then our adjuster bolt over in the back so we can i forget if it's tightening or loosening but whatever that does that'll take the belt off um we might have to take the fan off might not probably not the ac compressor on the new style this comes off real easy you just got the four bolts on the top on the renix you'll have two on the bottom that have to slide out i forget which way they come out so we'll uh, we'll start with that, I think. Okay. So first up for those wonderful Renix things, we come out of the bottom. You can see the two bolts back here that have to be loosened. We get under there. Come on, brighten up, you bastard. Those two, those are half inch bolts, I think. So those gotta be loosened. To the top, we got this one. We had one at the bottom, somewhere in there for the adjuster, and that should be everything. So the last part will be that bolt there. So that will move our uh, our belt so we can get this crap off. So there you go, that's loose. After a while, you can just kind of push on this and it'll, it'll let free, so our belt is off. So now we're gonna take these bolts off. Maybe they don't fucking break. <laughs> Slow and steady. Gotta love that, uh, or that is aluminum cast bullshit. Well, we were almost lucky. Three out of the four came out. One of them decided they wanted to snap. Yay. Ah, uh, what do you think? Get away with a, uh, a newly found stud? At least we got kind of lucky with where it snapped. That should be fun to fuck with. But that's the first part of the, um, 
the bracket, and then the other part, I believe, mounts uh, right there. Make sure you just take that yeah, out. Take that out. Put that, put that in there. Neat. Okay, so I think this is how it's supposed to work. So if we look down here, we can see our our little bracket, which is going to go behind the alternator, I think, and somehow bolt to that. But we're going to figure that out in a second because we need a longer bolt, but we can't fit a longer bolt in there. So how the hell does that work? And then we got this side over here that holds that, and that'll bolt to uh, to that end. So I think that seems to fit fairly well. It's about where it needs to sit, so... Hmm. Alright, so here's where we're at so far. We're using the wrong bolt. So there's a smaller bolt that slides into there, although it looks like a washer might help that out a little, unless this is upside down. But, uh, this is just in for test purposes, so we'll see how that does. Okay, so I found I had the bracket backwards. Uh, that little angled piece is what sits up and the, uh, the alternator rests in there properly. So now we don't have to worry about washer issues because that's nice and tight. This bolt slides through fine and uh, that appears to line up pretty well. The only problem is I don't think the kit came with the bolt for that. And the factory one's not quite long enough. Like it, it's just, it's not really, it's not gonna cut it. And on top of that, we don't have a nut for it. So what the frick? We might have to get a bolt. Hmm. But the big alternator fits in this with this bracket, so that is friggin' cool. I like that. Alright, so now the fun part, now that we got most everything figured out, we have the alternator out for bolts. Um yeah, that's something to mention. Um if you're not if you're doing this on a Renix, you're gonna have to get the long bolt. So uh that was a M10 and it's gotta be longer than a hundred millimeter. So I think we got a 125. So it was an M10 1.25 thread pitch and uh, times 125 length and a nut to match. But anyway, uh, when we're looking for custom belts, I always like to measure. If you have a a tape measure that's actually flexible, you wrap it around the whole engine, you follow the, the route, and you pull tight. You want to make sure that your adjuster is all the way down. Uh, that way, when you put the belt on, it'll it'll stretch. So you got to account for the stretch. But you match the two lines up, and then you see how long the belt is. So, do we have... Yes, we do. So, fun fact, the length of the belt is actually in the part number. So we have two here. The kit came with, or um, the kit recommended a 74 and a half inch belt. Notice those numbers anywhere. Right here. 50 is the type of belt that it is. It'll vary for manufacturers. The 6 is our uh, rib count. We got 6 ribs. And, um... The 74 and a half inches is right here. This right here is another way that you'll see this in metric form. The 6PK, 6 is a rib count. And this is the length in millimeters, so it's 1,890. Yay. All right, so um, we measured out to about 76, so we went a little smaller. This is a 75 and a half. So we're going to see if that stretches on and fits, because i got a feeling this is going to be too short. But we'll see what works. Okay, so right now we're going to try the double stud trick, uh, or the double nut trick to take the stud off, but um, they're starting to loosen up. So we're going to try a little heat, see if we can get the map torch in there and see if that helps at all. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah. Right. Make sure I don't stare at it either. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you're looking away, right? Yeah, you're good. Okay, arc. Hit it. I'll just blow it out with some brake clean. There you go. Oh, look, you can actually see it poofing out and stuff. It was like coming out of the threads and like <laughs> flaming. Nice. What's the red light mean? <laughs> that means it's um, it's safe to touch. Oh, word. <laughs> it still fits. Look at that. I hear cracking. I don't know if it's good cracking or bad cracking. Mm, this is one way to find out. I'm trying to tighten it just a little, make sure it's still okay. Let's <coughs> yeah. so try to thread a tap a thread in reverse. Shit. There it goes. Yeah, now we're lower on the chain. Heck. 
Okay, so it's a lot later now, but we'll update. So we tried getting that stud out and no luck. Tried welding nuts to it, nothing. Uh, I tried drilling it with the grabbits, but the grabbits weren't really, uh, they would catch, but then they'd just instantly, you know, shear out of the hole. So for now, we're just gonna run it as is, uh, with just that rear bolt and the, the, the belt will pull down the other side for now. And he'll get that figured out, but for now we gotta get him home. Uh, so that, that bolt is tight, and this bolt is basically tight, so everything lines up pretty well. Fun fact, this is a seven rib pulley from the, uh, the Grand Share here, whatever the, the Dodge or whatever, um, high, high old uh, that is. So I guess, uh, have fun choosing what, what rib you want to be on. Uh, uh, as well as belts, this one is too short. And this is the 76 and a half one, or the, the 75 and a half. So yeah, I guess, uh, if we measure 76, we need 76. Uh, so that 74 that we were going to use that, that was recommended not even close for us. So we're going to go get that exchange, get one that's a little longer, and uh, come back. Okay, so here we are hours later. Uh, we traded both those belts in and got a 77 inch belt. And now we have a, actually have one that fits. They could probably stand to be slightly smaller, but I think um, our attention will take that up just fine. So yeah, she is looking good. I think it's time to continue. Sweet. Okay, so now that we actually have the alternator fit, now we have to do the external regulator part. So in this kit, we have the regulator, and we have a wiring harness, a uh, ground wire, and some other bolts and screws, and what, what else. Um, so here is our diagram. It's not super complicated. So here's our alternator. We have two wires going to the field. From what I remember, it doesn't matter which one is which, but we're going to have a black one that goes to the, uh, the F uh, terminal over here, and the red one is going to go to the I terminal here. And the other part... The, this thing has uh, two separate wires, so we got our main red black and then our smaller red over here. That will go to 12 volt ignition, and this is what uh, primes the field or whatever the heck it does. It, it's like a jump start that actually gets the alternator working. Because uh, if you don't use this wire, uh, your alternator is not going to work. And uh, if you hook it to 12 volts constantly, it's going to drain your battery over time. So we needed a, a good ignition source. Luckily, on the internal uh, regulated uh, factory alternator, there should be uh, an ignition source wire on one of the plugs so yeah we are going to probably put this guy in the firewall and see where everything mounts okay so here we are so far we got the external regular uh, mounted on the firewall we got self-tapping screws I just put that in the impact gun and ran it in there a couple ooga doogas did just fine so we got the uh, the factory the included connector very cleanly routed underneath everything else and boop, over here so we have our uh, our included uh, eyelet uh, terminals on there with our wire strippers. Guess what I learned today? This part is where you actually use the crimpy bit. Not down here. Who would have fucking thunk? The more you know. We can all learn today. But anyway, it doesn't matter which way this goes on. So uh, we should be set. So the next part is to take this guy and hook it up to ignition. So with our old alternator down there, uh, we have our connector. So we've only got two wires here. And one of them, maybe both of them, go to ignition. I'm going to test just to make sure. But whatever one does, we're just going to snip. And uh, we're going to run that wire into there. It does come with an included buck connector if you want to connect it that way. And then down at the bottom, we'll take the big alternator wire and just run it up here. Yippee. Now we have to run the ground wire, which um, you should probably put in the loom because it's got to go over to the alternator anyway. So uh, yeah, I had to get a bigger eyelet connector for this side because this screw is a little bigger, and one for this side over here. So now we have the two um, things going to the uh, the fields right there, the black and the red. Um, we have our, our main cable hooked up to the alternator now. Uh, by the way, disconnect the negative cable, you know. Don't do anything stupid, believe me. It's really easy. And uh, the next step was, this was the factory plug, so we checked uh, um, I checked both the terminals with the key off, zero volts on both, good, and then with the key on, I found the yellow wire on the right, so if we look at the, um, the flippy tab there, that yellow one has 12 volts. So we're going to cut this wire, and we are going to splice it into this, so that our alternator gets a feed, and then everything should be happy. We can tighten down the belts and uh, give her a crank. Sweet! All right, so final check. Everything is now hooked up. So we got our yellow wire hooked into our positive over here for our ignition. 
Everything is um, fairly tidy and out of the way. Everything's tight, connect. No, everything's not tight. We didn't tighten. Wait. Yeah, we did tighten the alternator, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Everything's tight. Everything's wide. I I remember now because you were holding it. Uh, yeah, that's all connected and grounded. This has to be grounded to the alternator specifically. So that's over there. Okay, and the belt is tight. So a 77 inch belt is what we needed to run this specific pattern to go underneath the crank, across the fan, and then use this idler pulley. So yeah, should do it. Zoom, zoom. Oh man, look at this. Whoa, that's a that's a low seat. So we can turn this on. Nothing blew up yet. Got our nice little REM over there. Zero volts. Okay, here goes nothing. Hey, look at that. 15 volts right on the money. Oh, she's looking good. Although your contrast needs to be adjusted a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, that's like 14, 15 volts right there. We go to diagnose, we go to uh, volts. Not bad. Cool. That's not bad at all though. She's definitely got good charging voltage. <laughs> Looks like we got good belt alignment uh, using the outer pulley. Because um, this is seven. Yeah, look at that. She's right on there. That looks good. Real good. We're shaking her, bouncing. Excellent. 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 Well, there you go. I guess we're going to clean up, but that's how you put an HO alternator on a Renix with a high mount bracket and external regulator. Yay! Okay. So I just uh, popped this out real quick to uh, check the um, the adjustment screw on the back. So now we're reading anywhere from 14.7 to 14.9 volts. So it's lower than 15 to 15.5, so that's good. We rotated the um, the adjustment screw counterclockwise one eighth of an inch, and that dropped us about a half, half a volt, 0.5 to 0.6 volts. So yeah, counterclockwise for lower, clockwise for higher. So uh, just play with it until it's good, but make sure she's screwed and tight and grounded and yeah. But that'll do it. That was actually rather simple. We got it done in a night. If it wasn't for that bolt snap, and this would be a really easy job. Just wire up a couple wires and bolt it all down. We didn't even have to grind anything for this high amp alternator, so Renix guys got it a little easier now with the uh, this eBay bracket. Cool beans. Well, I might tighten the belt a little bit. All right, well, I guess that'll do it. If uh, you need any help or anything, uh, links in the description for all this good stuff.